is tidier than my desk. Oh, the notebook is untouched. It's completely blank. So? Even the most well-used notebooks start off blank. A picture frame. With no picture. You know, I've always wanted one of those. A mechanical solar system? What? I would look at it. Wait a minute. Earth in the middle, sun on the outside. How old is this thing? That's the one. Hey, not bad. Did you hear that? Something unlocked. There's a little hatch underneath? What's in there? A bunch of paper. Looks like somebody's research. Pretty. Let's at least introduce ourselves before touching his telescope. Always a good role. Shh, listen. Do you hear them? The stars. They're whispering. So quiet and yet so loud. What are they whispering about? Are they spreading rumors about us? I shouldn't think they concern themselves with such insignificance. We are but specks of dust, you and I. Mm-hmm. Could this speck of dust start by telling me his name? You find yourself standing in the astronomy tower of one Professor Percival Pointer. Hmm. Seems like this tower belongs to the Pointers, and the other one belongs to the Fellows. Well observed, my dear. Tangle Tower is something of a duality, as it happens. Uh, meaningless boundaries, really. They exist only in our minds. Helpful. Me? Not much to say. Strictly speaking, I'm the current head of the Pointer family. And, of course, father to my precious poppy. And? A professional astronomer? Oh, no, that's just a little hobby. I mean, yes, I've studied the stars for over 35 years, published 17 books. Just a little hobby. Sounds like you're quite well known. You must bring in a good amount of money. Oh, dear me, no. My field of research has never yielded any kind of stable financial return, nor would I expect it to. I am nothing but a humble interpreter for the cosmos, working to translate its message so that I may share it with the world. Cool. Tell the cosmos I say hi. The day began as any other, with blissful, unremarkable routine. I took my usual morning walk around the gardens. Fresh air does wonders for the mind. Did you see anyone else? Penelope and Fitz were in the greenhouse together. I didn't bother them, of course. I sat for a while besides the pond in the garden. It's a favorite spot of mine. Eventually, I returned to my tower and buried myself in my studies for the afternoon. Did you use your telescope yesterday? Once the stars began to appear, naturally. For how long? I can't say. I've been known to lose hours at my telescope. Did you see anything? No actual discoveries, if that's what you mean. So you were all alone up in the astronomy tower. Must have been a while before you found out what had happened to Freya. Quite. Normally, I would be the last to find out about such a thing. But a curious tug of fate led me towards the fellow tower later that evening. I was at my telescope for the majority of the evening, but at one point I returned to my desk to look something up in a reference book. I couldn't find the book I wanted, so I figured Fiona must have borrowed it. I left my tower and headed down towards the Grand Hall. I spotted Detective Hawkshaw coming out of the library. She looked impatient and slightly frustrated. Same as ever, then? 
Quite. I passed her by and went upstairs to Fiona's room. The door was locked, but I could hear shouting coming from inside. I recognized Fiona's voice as well as the voice of my own daughter. I had no desire to invade their privacy by eavesdropping, so I waited for them to finish and come out into the hall. Before I could ask about the book, Poppy grabbed my hand and took me upstairs along with Fiona. It was apparent that both of them had already been crying about something. We went up to Flora's tower. Freya was laying on her back, right in the middle of the room. Flora and Fitz were already there. They both looked stoic as ever. Felix and Penny arrived shortly after we did, and then Fiona went downstairs with Poppy for some reason. I quickly decided that I should leave also. I took Penelope with me, and we both went back to our rooms in Pointer Tower. Why did you leave so quickly? Wasn't there anything you could have done to help? Don't take this the wrong way, but the whole ordeal is fellow family business. I I'm quite sure they don't need me getting in the way at a time like that. A listless soul drifting through the ether. What's wrong with her? Not sure. She's always been troubled. Comes from a dysfunctional family. I'd say you can ask her about it, but, uh... I think you might find that to be a bit of a dead end. Hard to read, that one. But she seems to know what she's doing. She's kind of mean. You know, I simply assumed all detectives were sharp, rigorous, and thorough. Then, of course, I met you. He should learn to make the most of his lot in life. And he does have a lot. In life. You're talking about money? Among other things, but yes, he currently has agency over a small fortune. That is, if he hasn't already squandered it or lost it. You two don't get on? Oh, no. We're the best of friends. Nobody could deny her talent. She was remarkable, artistically gifted, but also highly intelligent. Those two things aren't mutually exclusive, you know. Was she ever interested in astronomy? I don't think she was. The fault may well lie with me for failing to inspire her, but I think she was captivated by more tangible things here on Earth. My daughter loved her. Fiona, too. That said, in the last year or so, more and more I begun to notice her by herself, wandering the gardens at the most peculiar hours. She must have explored every inch of the grounds a hundred times over. Quite a restless spirit, I think. I'm surprised she chose to live at Tangle Tower as long as she did. Ah, Penelope, our resident ornithologist. Penny's your niece, is that right? At this moment in time. Until she marries the gardener. She'll still be your niece. But she'll depart from the world of the Pointers and join the Fellows. Like rats deserting a sinking ship. My poppy, my pride and joy. Exceptionally talented pianist from a young age, she... Hold on, why is she on your list of suspects? Because she's a suspect. Oh no, I can personally vouch for her innocence. She never... Well, the truth is, she loved Freya very dearly. If you don't mind me asking, what happened to Poppy's mother? Primrose? She was Flora's sister, a Remington by birth. The playing field has never really been even since she left. Where did she go? Away. She went away. What do you want me to say? He's the gardener. He's a member of the family. Yeah, but not the Pointer family. What happened to his parents, do you know? His father, Flint, is Felix's brother. Strange man. Don't think anybody knows what happened to him, but he certainly doesn't live here anymore. What about his mother? Emily? I've not met her. She never actually married into the fellow family. Her relationship with Flint was, uh, it was short-lived. Ah, yes, the heiress of Tangle Tower. Goodness knows what'll happen when she takes charge. 
I dare say she'll confiscate my telescope and replace it with a microscope. She doesn't seem to be the type to impress her will on others. Still, keep an eye on her. Dangerously intelligent, that one. You sound jealous. Wait, are you two science rivals? Oh no, we operate on very different wavelengths. Literally. I don't especially want to talk about myself. Introspection often leads to vanity. Wait, does it? Why don't we discuss the moons of Jupiter instead? I'm not sure if we have time. Aren't there like 10 of them? 83. Yeah, we don't have time. So, we found some research. What's up with this golden beetle? Is this something you're studying? I can't help you, I'm afraid. I think it must be something left behind by a previous inhabitant of Tangle Tower. I'm not the first scientist to ever walk these halls, you know. Well, it wasn't in the halls. It was in your astronomy tower. So, which one is Tangle Tower? What's that? There are two towers, right? Flora's Tower and your astronomy tower. Neither? Truly, I have no idea. You'd have to ask Flora. She named the house? The whole thing is a result of her squabbling with her family. With Felix, you mean? Her husband? No, no, her brother and sister, and her father. The Remington family was a rather tumultuous little unit, you see. I don't think Flora has spoken with any of them in over a decade. Where on earth did you find that? It was in a bush outside. I think someone threw it away. How peculiar. Mm. I find that painting to be in rather bad taste. Oh, yeah? The knife with real blood on it? The whole thing is rather vulgar. Freya was well acquainted with the abstract, I'll say that much. What does it look like to you? To me? It's a big, red thing. What a fascinating interpretation. He's right, though. It is a big red thing. These were drawn by Freya? She must have drawn that one of Hawkshaw rather recently. I guess. Poppy's two closest friends. Freya looks so innocent there. What a precious photograph. She hasn't changed a bit, has she? Who? Oh, if you don't know, perhaps I don't either. That's a very old book, isn't it? Looks like someone could have taken better care of it. I like the look of a well-read book. Better than one that's never been opened. Ah, well put. It's a little handmade card. Someone's drawn a heart on the front. Inside it says, To Fitz, from PP. Doesn't look soft. Hello. Not hidden very well, is it? Doesn't need to be. It's locked. It's a combination lock. Sort of.
Anything in there? Yeah, it's wrapped in a cloth. Hold on. Huh, that's kind of ominous. It's locked, but it leads outside. I thought we were halfway up a tower. We are. What's that thing by the handle? It made a noise. I guess that was right. And the door's still locked. I still feel like we made some sort of progress. A big glass door leads out into a There's garden. There's a little mechanism. Something happened. That must be it. Finally, it's open. Whatever's on the other side better be worth it. It's another little statue, doing a really bad job of hiding in the bushes. He's playing a lute this time. He's also wearing headphones. Well, they're not part of the statue. And they're not headphones. They're earmuffs. A little pond. It looks really, really deep for some reason. See those metal bars around the edges too? Oh yeah. What are you supposed to have for? Nothing anymore. Looks like somebody broke them and then never bothered to fix it. It's a rose bush, growing on a little patch of bluish soil. Now, apart from a couple of loose petals on one side, the whole thing looks very well cared for. The roses are bright red, too. Now, aren't roses normally that color? Exactly. Giant stone frog? Love it. Ah, he's got his tongue out like he's catching snowflakes. Except those aren't snowflakes. They're feathers. Be careful, we're pretty high up. Yeah, we're on a roof. Every astronomy tower needs a telescope. I want to try. You can see right into Flora's room. Not by accident. I can see Flora, but she's not looking this way. She's looking up. Behind her is the backside of the easel holding Freya's unfinished painting. I can't really see anything behind it. Not from this angle. Is that a window? I think it is. Is there another room above Flora's room? We should check that next time we're over there. Isn't this supposed to be an astronomy telescope? I'm pretty sure you need to see the sky for astronomy to work. I can't move it. I think this is just how it's set up. There's something about Pointer's astronomy habits. Something suspicious. Let's ask him about it. It's a statue of a wolf, standing up straight, like a man. You know there's a name for that. I know. It's not quite as dusty as everything else up here. Also, it's not a statue. It's stuffed. Where's that light coming from? Oh, it's just daylight, I think. There's a decent gap between those floorboards. Is that what I think it is? What is that? Not sure. Some kind of reel? Looks like it might attach to something. It's a jar. The head screws off. Huh. At least the moths are kept well fed. <laughs> 